March 24th, 2024. E.V. Associated Press, Rome. Pope Francis decided at the last minute to skip his homily during Palm Sunday Mass in St. Peter's Square, avoiding a strenuous speech at the start of a busy Holy Week that will test his increasingly frail health. Hobbled by bad knees and persistent respiratory problems, Francis also didn't participate in the procession of cardinals around the obelisks in the piazza at the start of the Mass. Instead, the 78-year-old pontiff blessed the palm fronds and olive branches carried by the faithful from the altar. Francis had been expected to deliver a homily halfway through the service and had pronounced the prayers during the Mass, but after several seconds of silence, announcers said Francis had decided not to deliver the homily itself. So I'll do it. Good Palm Sunday, everyone. Yes, I'll deliver the, the, the homily. Uh, I am actually a bishop. Uh, in chapters uh, 6 and th uh, 31 of uh, my book, Low Magic, I refer to my credentials as a bishop. Uh, I thought the reader would appreciate a little more information. Throughout the years, I've received at the hands of several individuals representing various denominational lines of succession, consecration in no less than 30 apostolic lines of succession, including all of those. And this is my homily. I don't care who you worship as God. I don't care if you worship. I don't care who you pray to or if you pray. I don't care if you're Muslim or Jew, Jain, Hindu, Christian, or Buddhist. Sandria? Candomblé, it's okay with me. You might believe in a scripture divine. You might believe in the Bible. Or in words from the Koran. Or Elron. Or me. But if your faith needs to conquer the world, if your God needs more converts. If you've been told that there'll be no peace on earth as long as there are unbelievers. If you believe that you'll never be free until you're dead, cold, and buried. That's not religion. That's politics. And you've been had. You've let them make you a moron. Bamboozled to worship a devil and tricked into selling your soul. Amen and amen and amen. Today is the 20... Fourth, we were talking about another holy season, that of the, the equinox of the gods and the Thelemic holy, holy days. 
in uh, the equinox of the gods. Crowley just says something that started yesterday and goes through April 8th. He simply says, during the period of March 23rd and April 8th, that's when the dictation of the Book of the Law began, whatever else may have happened, because he, obviously he's writing this years later, Whatever else may have happened, it's at least certain that work was continued to some extent, that the inscription of the stele were translated for Frater P, and that he paraphrased the latter in verse. For we find him using or prepared to use the same in the text of Liber Legis. Okay, now remember, uh, okay, there's a there's a stele, and there's all that uh, hieroglyphs there on the front, and I think on the back, do we have a back? I think we do, and there's the there's the back of the stele. And there's all that stuff. And Crowley had it translated by the by uh, uh, someone that the museum hired uh, for him. And uh, then he paraphrased it in verse. And the, uh, those of you who are familiar with the Book of the Law will recognize that those verses, some of those, were inserted into the Book of the Law. The point I'm trying to make here is uh, uh, maybe... <laughs> Maybe one of doctrinal uh, debate. But the paraphrase of the stele obviously came before the dictation of the Book of the Law. Crowley's own artistic and poetic brain and understanding of... of uh, at least remedial Egyptology at the, that he had at the time, uh, were responsible for the words in those verses. Okay, we can say that. Well, maybe he was inspired by by uh, uh, somehow projecting into the future to uh, to make that part of the dictation of the Book of the Law, which is never even suggested by Crowley. But I would, the idea that the verses section, the little things that look like poetry, the little things that look like that, that are inserted into the text of the Book of the Law, were inserted later, usually, and uh, assumedly at the direction of Rose, or Crowley's own idea, insert things here. As a matter of fact, when the Book of the Law went to press with a real life print shop and stuff, Crowley said, insert sections of this thing here, insert here from blah, blah, blah to blah, blah, blah. And one of those things, he said, insert here down to the words, fill me, or Aum let it fill me. That was a note that was written in pencil years later, okay? And it was a note to the printer, okay? So that had been translated by the printer into changing the, the word that Filmy was supposed to uh, uh, replace, and then consequently it was it was repeated over and over and over again in subsequent uh, publications, which admittedly Crowley either overlooked, didn't see at all, or wanted it left that way. Whatever it was. That was not what Crowley originally translated, uh, had translated and uh, paraphrased in his paraphrase of those things. And here's 
what uh, Crowley actually prints in the Equinox of the Gods as what the paraphrase says. Above the gem at azure, the naked splendor of Nuit, she bends in ecstasy to kiss the secret ardors of Hadit. The winged globe, the starry blue, are mine, O Ankaf Nakamsu. I am the Lord of Thebes, and I, the inspired force speaker of Mentu. For me unveils the veiled sky, the self-slain Ankaf Nakamsu, whose words are truth. I invoke, I greet thy presence, O Rahur Kuwait. Unity uttermost showed, I adore the might of thy breath, supreme and terrible God, who makest the gods and death to tremble before thee. I, I adore thee. Appear on the throne of Ra, open the ways of the Ku, lighten the ways of the Ka. The ways of the Kabs runs through to stir me or still me. Aum, let it kill me. The light is mine, its rays consume me. I have made a secret door into the house of Ra and tomb of Kephra and Ahathur. I am thy Theban O Mentu, the prophet Ankaf Nkansu. By Besna mouth my breast I beat, by wise Tanik I weave my spell. Show thy star splendor, O Nuit. Bid me within thine house to dwell, O winged snake of light Hadit. Abide with me, Rahur Kuwait. And uh, the paraphrase of the back is more or less uh, 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 his his rendering of the classic uh, phrase or spell from the Book of the of the Dead. And uh, these verses do not appear inserted uh, within the text of the Book of the Law. So. That's my little doctrinal uh, question. You know, uh, I upset some people when I say, I don't care if you say, I will let it fill me or I will let it kill me. Uh, when I first read it, when I first had a copy of a, I've got a big uh, kind of... Uh, rare uh, equinox of the gods and I read it I will let it kill me and I went whoa that's that's different than what I've what I've read over the years frankly from a from a mystical point of view I will let it kill me works just fine with me but so does I will let it fill me and uh I would not stop to correct uh, anybody except to say that that word and that verse was not a part of the dictation that Crowley heard uh, on April 8th, 9th, and 10th, or whenever the dictation took place. That wasn't heard, okay? That came as an idea later, insert Oh, that would go good here. Okay, so it wasn't part of the dictation. So, uh, uh, and that I will uh, it, insist upon <laughs> uh, making making clear when we have that discussion. Okay, uh, and I hope I, I just lost my page here. Uh, in the Equinox of the Gods here, you'll see uh, reproduced a thing that looks like this. Okay, and I first saw that. Uh, this is uh, Helen Parson Smith. Uh, uh, Philema Publishing, uh, I think this edition was 1980-something. Uh, uh, Helen published these beautiful, yeah, 1981, uh, these beautiful hardbound editions of the Book of the Law uh, without the facsimile. 
Um, and she gave them to the early members of the, the OTO officers. Uh, and that same thing was printed on the inside back cover of this. Okay. Foley describes that as uh, uh, something he was working on in, uh, at this time, April, excuse me, March 23rd through April 8th. Whatever else may have happened, it is at least certain that the work had continued to some extent that the inscription of the stele uh, were translated for Frater P and that he paraphrased the latter in verse. We find him using or preparing to use the same in the text of Liber Legis. Perhaps then, perhaps later, he made the, quote, name coincidences of the Kabbalah, unquote, to which we now must direct the reader's attention. Okay, and then he, you know, has a lot of that uh, spelled out. The manuscript is mere fragmentary sketch, as we just saw. But here's what he was talking uh, uh, about and what he was doodling, literally doodling, like, like I do on a million backs of envelopes from my trash, <laughs> cabalistically, okay? Uh, CH equals 8, Chet equals 418, equals Abrahadabra, equals Rahur. Also, it is the great symbol I adore. This may be because of its likeness to the infinity symbol or because of its old golden dawn attribution to Da'af. P being then a rationalist or for some other reason. So is O. O equals A in the book of Thoth, the tarot. A equals 111 with all of its great meanings. Uh, the sun equals six. Now, 666, my name, the number of the stele, the number of the beast, see Apocalypse, then the number of the man. The beast, Achia, equals 666 in full. The usual spelling is Chiva. A equals 111, CH equals 418, I equals 20, H equals 6, A equals one one one. Heru Raha, spelled H R V R A H A, two hundred and ten plus two hundred and one plus six four eighteen. You can see where where he's playing with this stuff. Ankaf Nakanshut six six six. We must uh, trust the addition. Uh, we must trust the addition of the termination T. Uh, will be found justified, just like uh, he would say nuith and hadith too. So, uh, besna mat and tanik, that's probably uh, Ankaf Nakansu's parents actually, uh, equals 888. Netaru, uh, a, a Netaru is. Uh, Th th that flag looking uh, uh, kind of hieroglyph, the gods. Uh, Netaru equals 666. Mentu equals 111. Iwas, at this time he spells it A I V A S, equals 78. 78, of course, is the number of uh, uh, tarot cards. The influence or messenger or book T. Uh, then he says, P.S., note this error. Tanik equals 78. Alternately, Shin for, for Chet gives us uh, 370. O and Shin equals creation. Okay. That's what he was playing with during this time period between uh, March 23rd and April 8th. I, I'm not sure if there was a Palm Sunday and Easter 
that year. I suppose you could look it up in in 50 seconds here. Uh, but uh, that's my contribution to the world of, of world religions this morning. My homily, Bishop Duquette's homily, Palm Sunday, and the period just prior to the reception of the Book of the Law. Go now in peace. I mean that. Do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. Love is the law. Love under will.